Once upon a time, there was a shy little girl. Her grandmother created a world for her filled with imagination and love. Every day was a new adventure filled with reading, learning about nature all around you and how to make something from nothing. But the girl was enchanted when her grandmother would recite the poem, In the Morning, by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Lies, don't you hear me call? No use turning toward the wall, I can hear that mattress squeak. Don't you hear me when I speak? This here clock done struck off six. Caroline, bring me them my sticks. Oh, you down, sir. Oh, you down. Don't you dare to frown. Mach yourself and wash your face, and don't you splatter all the place. I got something else to do, so I was cleaning after you. And take that comb and fix your head. Look just like a feather bed. <gasps> Look here, boy. I'll let you see. You shan't roll your eyes at me. Come here. Bring me down my strap, boy. I'll whip you till you drop. You done felt yourself too strong, and you surely got me wrong. Now sit down at that table there. Just you whimper if you dare. Every morning on this place seem like I must lose my grace. Fold your hands and bow your head. Wait until the blessing said. Lord, have mercy on our souls. Don't you dare touch them rolls. <laughs> Bless this food we want to eat. You sit still, I see your feet. You just tried that trick again. Give us peace and joy. Amen. <laughs> but away from grandmother's safe haven, the girl was bullied at school for her nappy hair, clothes that weren't in style, or talking like a white girl. So she became quiet, burying herself in books, reading 101 year just to take attention away. One day, she heard about an acting class and she was so excited, she wanted to sign up. But her guidance counselor cast seeds of doubt saying that she was too shy and wouldn't do well. But the girl thought about all those times when she had practiced and recited with her grandmother. Wasn't that acting? And secretly at home, she was acting out movies and she knew all the words to The Mighty Ducks. <laughs> the Sandlot and hook, and she was bangerang. <laughs> now, she decided to prove that guidance counselor wrong. She took the class anyway. Today, she is a communications consultant, an actor, and she's performed in many productions and, and film. You may have guessed by now that I'm that little girl, all grown up, I'm Chanel Marie. And I've learned that sometimes there are pivotal moments where you have to stand up for yourself. Others may have expectations or misperceptions about you that you have to overcome. They may have a different vision. Or sometimes you just have to raise your voice. So as an adult, I have learned, and sometimes I've fantasized that what I would do if I ever saw that guidance counselor again, yeah. So I can relate to this woman and this monologue by H. A. Riordan. She's also having a moment where someone is blocking her. She is just about to back out of her parking space and a woman in a fancy car pulls up, blocks her in. She can't get out of her car. This is not a flattering story. <laughs> <laughs> I am shocked by this woman's impoliteness. She is actually double parking her car, going inside. It's as if I don't exist. Visibly shaking with anger, I walk into the Gus Giordano Dance Center, where at the top of the stairs I see the woman amicably chatting away with a group of mothers, and I snap. Every time I've been wronged and victimized in my 32 years, did I mention it was my birthday? Comes crashing back into my mind, and suddenly I think of the most horrible thing I can do to that woman. I will walk over to her daughter, and very calmly and quietly and menacingly say, your mommy has done something very bad. 
and now something very bad is going to happen to your mommy. And you will never see your mommy again. And as I walk down the stairs, out the door, around the corner, who cares about the car? At that point, I will hear that small child screaming and screaming, psychologically scarred for who knows how long. I don't, of course. I just walk up to the woman and I say, you need to move your car now. And then I walk down the stairs. But I can see that I've scared the group of them, and it'll be a long time before any of them decides to park illegally again. And I just hope I can keep my anger in check. Thank you.